I'm Chef Carol, and this is my first sewing tutorial. Normally, I find tutorials for my patterns on YouTube. When I searched for Vogue R11843, I couldn't find any videos. This pattern offered several challenges for me. First, it is an advanced pattern. Second, it contained techniques I had never used. I believed I had to have this dress and decided to invite anyone else interested in making this dress to take the journey with me. I believe that failure is not an option. Let's get started. We're gonna start on part three. So at the conclusion of part two, we had inserted the invisible zipper. What you are going to do from this point is go ahead and put the pockets on. So you're gonna install the pockets on the front, and then you'll install the, uh, the other pocket on the back separately. The next thing that you'll do is go ahead now, before we put the sides together, and fit your dress to make sure that before you put the seam in, that it fits your body properly. Remember, this dress is fitted on the top and then it flares on the bottom. What I've had to do, I started with my 5 8 inch seam here, but then I had to use my French curve to bring the waist in. I drew my lines, brought them down to what would be the seam line or what would be the large dock here. And I decided that I will base my dress together before I start to sew. On this side, you'll see that in addition to having sewn on the pockets, and I made the measurements, I based it on the line using my French curve. And remember, the pocket, if you look at the pattern, we do indeed enclose the pocket right at the top. Then we'll pick up from the large dot and finish that seam all the way down. As I said, I've based it mine. I would suggest you do something similar because you don't want to have to rip this out. It's so many layers. And once we finish that, then we will take that last seam that we created right here. This will be mine once it's sewn in. And the pocket is here, and this will be the pleats on the side. Let's get through sewing on the pocket, fitting the dress, basting, or you may go ahead if you want and sew in your seams if everything is fine. Make sure you sew to the large dot. Leave that space open right there between the two dots on the waist and the pocket. Make that small seam at the top of the pocket. Pick it up from the large dot and bring it down to the end. And then we'll meet back here. So this is the dress basted together on my dress form. It's fitted and I've tried it on and now it's ready for me to stitch it. At this point, I have completely basted my dress, tried it on, and I've put in the permanent seams after I made the adjustments. You've also already sewn on your pockets. So now we're going to work on the pleats on each side seam. And we're going to do those exactly the way we did them before. You put a crease along the solid line. I'm going to base that crease in, matching the large dots. And on the inside, stitch each side of the pleat from the fold to the large dot, keeping the dress free. What you see here is that I've matched this seam to the large dot. And as before, I have to now sew, and the pocket is toward the front of the dress. So I'm going to sew from this dot to the end and from this dot to the end. And I'm going to do that on both sides. Make sure that when you put your pockets on, if you had to do any clipping to make sure the pockets lie flat, that you've already done that. Let's get started with the pleats. When we come back here, we should have already, as before, basted it down very close to the crease of the pleat. Then you're going to come in and sew from, from center to the right and from center to the left. So this side I have open. I've already pressed my seams open. So I'm matching the pocket seam with this center seam. And I'm going to pin it to make sure that it stays centered. And the one thing they warn us is when we're sewing from center to the right and center to the left, make sure you keep it separated from the dress. So let's do that and meet back here. 
at this point, I have completed the side pleats. And these are the basting I'm removing that created the creases. And I've also on the inside tacked down the pleats to the underlining. That completes part three. In the next steps, I'm going to start working on the lining and we've already interfaced the lining. What I'm going to suggest that you do is go ahead and put in all your stay stitching and uh, we'll start from number 16. See you on the next one.